Well, this is it, friends. The reviews are in. Cyberpunk 2077 is just days away from release, and it seems like everybody on the internet has put out a review. So with so many different opinions out there, how do you get to the total sum of the experience? How do you know which ones to read? Well, I've done the legwork for you. I have looked far and wide across the internet. I have scoured multiple sites in many different languages internationally in order to bring you this consolidated report. Everything about the game, the highs, the lows, the things that they got right, and the things that may not be exactly what people were expecting. So I've created this video for you, and it's not going to take 30 minutes of your day. In just a few minutes, what are the highs and lows, and what do you need to know about Cyberpunk 2077? Well, let's get started. And if this is informative or interesting, or you want to come back for any information like this in the future, then make sure you subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, turn on notifications, and you know what? You could also check out my podcast, The Cyberpunk Lorecast, available on this channel and everywhere else that you can get podcasts. All right, let's dig in. Starting with the most positive reviews, we have a review from GameSpew from Richard Seagrave. This gave the game a 10 out of 10, a perfect score. And they say, Cyberpunk 2077 isn't perfect, but it is ambitious. It marries a gripping story with a huge open world absolutely dripping with atmosphere, one in which after 50 hours of gameplay, I still feel like I've only scratched its surface. Even now, I'm itching to jump back in and complete yet more side jobs, not only because they're enjoyable, but also just in case they offer V more options when it comes to ending their story. 50 hours of gameplay, 10 out of 10. They say it's not perfect, but they gave it a perfect score. So I guess they're not expecting any game to be perfect, but this is about as perfect as you can get. Next up, we have Hobby Consolas, a Spanish site, uh, a review from David Martinez gives it a 98 out of 100 and says Cyberpunk 2077 is one of the greatest RPGs of the generation. We love Night City, its characters and great writing for every mission. It is also one of the best looking games out there if your PC is powerful enough. Another 10 out of 10 came from Power Up from Leo Stevenson, who says, frankly, 2077 is the best video game I've ever played. Another 10 out of 10 from the Slavic site, Sector.sk, Peter Dragula writes, Absolutely stunning arcade game with a lot of content, deep RPG progress and dialogue. Another masterpiece from CD Projekt Red. And another 10 out of 10 came from The Digital Fix. Andrew Shaw says, CD Projekt Red has set a new standard for what can be achieved in the sandbox. Cyberpunk 2077 is taking open world gaming to the next generation. And one more perfect score from Windows Central, Jez Corden writes, Cyberpunk 2077 is an open world masterpiece that features some of the most immersive and liberating storytelling this industry has to offer, with full freedom to choose V's personality, looks, and gameplay style. Cyberpunk 2077 gives the player an unrelenting amount of control in a world that delivers dozens upon dozens of hours of high-quality content. Cyberpunk 2077 is a mammoth achievement and solidifies CD Projekt Red's place at the top of the pile. Now, not all the sites were as glowing as these, the most common critique of the game were bugs. And there is no DA1 patch for these reviewers, so that would make sense that they got a game that isn't quite patched out yet. Now, we don't know for sure that the day one patch will fix all of the bugs, and a lot of the more popular sites were a little bit more critical about the game. First, we have James Davenport from PC Gamer, who gave it a 78 out of 100, one of the lowest scores out there. James wrote, some nice characters and stories nested in an astounding open world, undercut by jarring bugs at every turn. Giant Bomb gave it a review, but no score, and they summarized it as saying, Early impressions discussion. They should have delayed this game even more. One word, undercooked. Now, I can't imagine that being a very popular decision with the fan base, being that the game has been delayed multiple times, but if the bugs were that egregious, that might have been the only solution. Eurogamer's Chris Tapsell also did not score it, but wrote, 
Beyond the bombast and the bugs, Cyberpunk 2077 has a very human heart. And that's another theme with the game. Some of the other critical sites have talked about the gameplay, the characters, and the other details of the game. And the most critical of these comes from Polygon's Carolyn Petit. Carolyn, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. They write, I can't deny that Night City wowed me with its scale, its verticality, and its sense of history. But I wish I could see people like me on its streets as something more than objects. I wish that the game's politics were more radical. And this review was very specifically about the representation of transgender individuals in the game. Now, my words will not do that justice. You need to check out the article itself on Polygon's site in order to get the entire perspective on that. Another of the more critical reviews from GamesBeat's Jeff Grubb gives the game three out of five stars and says, CD Projekt Red delivered a big budget thrill ride with entertaining quests in a thriving setting, but it isn't much more than that. And another one of the most negative reviews that I was able to find comes from Kaylee Plage at GameStop, and hopefully I pronounced your name correctly as well. With a 7 out of 10, they write, Cyberpunk 2077 has standout side quests and strong main characters, though its buggy, superficial world and lack of purpose brings it down. So across all of these reviews, there is a general consensus that the game did release a little bit early. There are a considerable number of bugs. The idea that CD Projekt Red did the same thing with The Witcher 3, and that's kind of how these really large RPGs go. There's so many systems that work together. Bethesda has been battling this issue for years. But if CD Projekt Red's track record is true, then within some time over the next year or years, they will eventually work out the majority of these bugs, and this will go down in history as one of the best games of this generation. Now, whether that will be considered the wrap-up of the previous generation or the beginning of this next generation is still ways to be seen. One of the places that a lot of the sites differed on opinions was the heart of the game, the stories and the characters. Some of the reviews found that to be lacking, like the negative ones that I mentioned in the summary. But others found the story to be actually very charming. And although it wasn't evident right off the bat, if you looked more carefully at the characters and at the story, then there is a heart there. There is a redeeming side to the story. So maybe it has a lot to do with your decisions as you play through the game. There's a lot we still don't know about how this will shake out, but hopefully you will get a chance to play this sooner than later. Seems like it's definitely a game that's worth playing if you can stand the bugs and if you're looking for at least a game that is gigantic in scale and has a lot of fun gameplay, a lot of bombast as one of the reviews said, and could potentially improve with time. As for the storyline, I guess we're just going to have to see. That might just come down to your personal preferences. Thanks for checking out my review of the reviews. And remember, if you would like more content like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Come back again for more content from Robots Radio. Talk to you guys later.